Hemolytic uremic syndrome belongs to so-called microangiopathic hemolytic anemias. Actually, we have two of them. Another one is thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura. Hemolytic uremic syndrome typically occurs in children and caused by Shiga toxin producing a Shirikia coli with specific serotype O157H7. Hemolytic uremic syndrome is characterized by massive formation of platelet microthrombi. The name of this condition tells that platelet microthrombi can cause severe damage to red blood cells in the circulation and destruction of red blood cells called hemolysis. These microthrombi are mostly formed in the kidney circulation, so the most severe damage will occur to the kidney tissue and damage to the kidney tissue will cause uremia. The concept here is that children have very specific dietary ratio, and the most common situation is that children can consume undercooked beef or unpasteurized milk, and there is a possibility that these products can contain a specific bacteria called Escherichia coli, with specific serotype O157H7. Escherichia coli then enters into the intestine, where it begins to produce shiga toxin. Such a Shrikia coli called Shiga toxin producing a Shrikia coli. Part of Shiga toxin from the lumen of the intestinal tract is absorbed into the blood circulation. And the specific feature is that this toxin is highly tropic to a glycophospholipids. And glycophospholipids are present on the multiple cells in our body. But very important that the highest quantity of glycophospholipids are present on glomerular endothelium and tubular cells that are both located in the kidney tissue. Once shiga toxin binds to glycophospholipids, it causes massive damage to endothelial cells that triggers hemostasis. So in response to endothelial injury, endothelial cells release a massive amount of von Willebrand factor. Then platelets bind, then fibrinogen, so platelet plaque is formed. And then secondary hemostasis will convert platelet plaque into a thrombi. So this results in formation of a massive amount of thrombi, especially in the glomerulus and tubular cells of the kidney tissue. First of all, thrombi will cause obstruction of the blood vessels. And with obstruction, blood flow to the tissue will decrease, so ischemia develops. Recall that blood flow is equal to pressure difference between two regions divided on resistance. And resistance is inversely proportional to the force power of radius. So with formation of a thrombus, radius decrease, thereby resistance increase. And with increase in resistance, blood flow will decrease. And with decrease in blood flow, oxygen and nutrients delivery decrease, so ischemia develops. Severe ischemia, simultaneously with severe damage to endothelial cells of the glomerulus, cause glomerular necrosis. Ischemia of the tubular cells triggers the apoptosis, and altogether this causes acute kidney injury that manifests with increase in blood creatinine level and cause increase in urea. Another problem is that if thrombus will cause significant obturation of the blood vessel, it will be very difficult for erythrocyte to squeeze through the site of obstruction. Basically, this thrombus will cleave red blood cell on two, and this damaged red blood cells called schistocytes. With hemolysis of red blood cells, obviously the total red blood cell count will decrease. Simultaneously, hemoglobin concentration will decrease. And decrease in hemoglobin concentration is a condition known as anemia. Because this anemia is caused by hemolysis, it's called hemolytic anemia. And also, lactate dehydrogenase that was contained inside the red blood cell will enter into the blood so the level of lactate dehydrogenase will be significantly elevated. As we see, because thrombi consists of platelets, massive amount of thrombi requires huge amount of platelets, and consumption of such huge amount of platelets in thrombus formation will cause decrease in total platelet count, a condition known as thrombocytopenia. In addition to this, E. coli infection is an intestinal infection. So shiga toxin by its nature primarily targets intestinal epitheliocytes, and damage to intestinal epithelium manifests with bloody diarrhea. So we have so-called triad with thrombocytopenia, microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, and acute kidney injury. In addition to this, patients due to intestinal infection also have bloody diarrhea.
In term of lab tests, decrease in blood thread count will cause prolongation of the bleeding time. But important that secondary hemostasis in hemolytic uremic syndrome is not affected at all. That's why PTT, PT and international normalized ratio remain normal. The treatment is symptomatic and obviously the key here is a proper diet. If you like content, please press like and subscribe button. All the best!